Welcome everyone back to Beat the Game. This is Steve, and it's time now time to talk about the protections, uh, the protection, the justice strategies, uh, and the different types of justice strategies for this game. So the first one we're going to be talking about is called permanent justice. Now, what is that permanent justice? Well, this is a a very very cool strategy for all these heroes that are lacking in the thwart department. All right. Uh, permanent justice is going to be focused on putting cards on the table that will help us control threat uh, to a, as as quickly as it can go up. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about the best cards about this there. But uh, one of the good strategies about this is it gives you so much time. So with a strategy like permanent justice you are very, very under the gun for the villain doing his thing. So you can basically stay in alter, it favors uh, heroes that want to flip to alter ego a lot. It flavor, it, it really favors heroes uh, that, you know, that just want to stay and, you know, have more damaged event, uh, damaged events in their kit. And it really favors, um, a really controlly type of game all right it's very very easy to be like wow I am in complete control of this game uh, I have slowed down the villains uh, scheme to a crawl and they're even if he gets he, I, I would have to be very very unlucky to be able to lose this game now where what's the so you're probably saying like wow what's the downside to this strategy well this is a very powerful solo strategy it becomes less viable or less effective in a two player game even less so in a three or four player game so if your whole strategy is just putting permanence on the table the problem is uh, in these multiplayer games is you need more bursty uh, type of thwart events and this is what justice is going to be lacking if you're playing your justice build is going to be lacking if you're playing a more permanent type of build now again not saying that it's not efficient at all but you will definitely see if you have a a, a hero that cannot remove threat efficiently with his hero kit permanent justice is going to be very very hard to be able to stabilize because if you get a few side schemes, and I'm, and then this is I'm talking in a multiplayer game, a few side schemes in a multiplayer game, it's really gonna just be like, wow, I just got overrun. So that is the biggest negative uh, to this strategy when you are playing a multiplayer game. Again, one to two players, depending on the scenario, uh, you should be okay. Three, four players, you're starting to look at, uh, you, you, you better be including a lot of bursty events. But again, that's how we get to see how the different styles work. And again, not one style will fit every scenario, but most scenarios you should be able to, in solo play, be able to use this permanent justice to uh, efficiently control threat and then use your signature cards to really go ahead and deal all the damage. So you're actually using the justice to do the justice stuff and your hero is gonna be doing his hero punching and, and stuff like that. All right, so that is it. That is like the, the upsides, the downsides. Now let's take a look at the heroes that make this strategy uh, really come alive and are very effective. And I think one of the... <laughs> It's going to be weird because, and this could be very controversial as well for a lot of people, but we are actually, this, again, this is my opinion, but one of the best heroes for this strategy is playing Hulk. That's right. Hulk making number one in a list. Amazing. Never seen before. But yes, Hulk in Alter Ego Justice is amazing. Uh, you can control threat. You don't have, a, you can't, you're not afraid to flip up, flip down. Uh, because he has those two double, triple resource cards, and then with all the new stuff that's come out, there's it's very easy to put a lot of cards onto play, 
and, and just control threat with those beat cops and stuff like that. So there is a lot of good ways that Hulk can just put stuff down for free, use his health to soak up a few attacks, and then set himself up for success. And with this strategy, Hulk is actually one of the best heroes to do this with. Another great one, and again, these are all powerful characters that have a lot of attack to do, Drax. Uh, and this is in no particular order, eh? So uh, this is like my favorite heroes to play this strategy with. Drax is another one. Uh, you're not really removing threat with Drax. His hero kit is very limited on what he can do with threat removal. Uh, so for me, this guy, uh, Drax, is another awesome, awesome character just defend don't even worry about thwarting just defend let your vengeance counters grow and put some stuff down flip down to alter ego there's actually some really awesome cards for guardians uh to actually play this strategy so very very efficient another one is groot uh, again same kind of concept groot as well he's got a lot of damage in his kit but his threat removal is very limited so again this type of strategy for this character is great we have Hawkeye, who's another fantastic uh, character for this uh, type of strategy. And my, my boy, Spider-Man. That's right. So these, I think, are my top five heroes to play this uh, permanent justice strategy. Uh, and then uh, there's, there's a lot more. I, I won't lie. There's, there's so many heroes that can make this happen. So I'm just going to increase. I'll, I'll bring these. These are my favorite. But... All the other characters that have a lot of effects that can, you know, really make this happen very efficiently. Thor, he's got those Defenders of the Nine Realms that can help. A lot of people criticize the low hand size, but sweet, sweet mother. Once Thor is set up with this alter ego stuff uh, and then this permanent justice, he's just a blast. And you're just like, I'll never worry about threat again and I'll just smash and then punch winnings. And how about the same thing for She-Hulk? Her kit naturally uh, reduces threat. So just putting more stuff that prevents threat. It was very hard. I was debating on who I wanted to put in the top five. And I was like, uh, I, I was definitely debating between her and Spider-Man to put into that five top five. But since she's so good with uh, her natural kit, uh, other characters like Nebula, Kamala Khan, uh, I, uh, Rhodey, uh, even Valkyrie in Justice does really, really well. And then I think every character, like, it's hard to just not name them all. I can just drop everyone else. And it's kind of hard not to just keep, but everyone else can kind of play in that strategy very, very efficiently. All right, so let's clean this up here because... Again, every character can really, really play this strategy really well, except for Adam Warlock, because kind of weird. Because, but every other character can really, really play into this permanent justice strategy. Again, it's super efficient, and but the ones I like it and the one that benefit the most of is those heroes I named, name dropped in the first, uh, in in the first time. So now let's take a look at some of the best cards uh, that. In that are available right now and there might be some new ones coming out especially with the, the new sinister motives as uh, I think uh, some of the shield cards look really really exciting and I'll see if they really fit into the strategy worst case scenario I'll just adapt some of them and then add some to this uh, to this list uh, as, as they get spoiled out all right, the top card for this uh, for this uh, strategy is no under it's not even a surprise it's the beat cop all right, let me just zoom in here. All right, so it's our beat cop. Oh, let me just poof, poof, poof. All right, top card for the strategy, guys. Uh, I think there's no even question, beat cop. The fact that you can have multiple copies of beat cop in play at a single time is just ridiculous. Not only that, that in solo play, it basically negates the villain's natural scheme and once you have two or three out on the table it's not even a question removing three threat a turn while doing nothing is super solid yes it comes with a price it has a cost of three but this card for this strategy is just ridiculous and it's not even only from the main scheme it's from any scheme 
whatsoever. So this card, again, this is probably the best card for that strategy. The second one, under surveillance. We can't hide that, that making under surveillance, um, going up the main scheme by four is immense. Now there's obviously a couple of scenarios like Ultron that start at three. Uh, I think the hood starts at three per player. And then there's a couple of other ones that the main scheme is actually really low. And adding four to that main scheme, it's not four per player, so that's a little sad, but it's four uh, to the total. So if it has uh, four per player, so let's say you're playing Rhino and it's 21, but with a van, it goes up to 25. So it, does, it doesn't It does sound as impressive uh, in a four player game, but in a solo game, it basically gives you the villain can scheme an additional time, even on the brink, and you might actually survive because you have that surveillance team under surveillance. So that is just one of my favorite cards here. Now, another great and amazing card for this is actually, a, it's not even threat removal, it's damage. And you're like, what? What? Da what? What's a permanent that does damage in justice? Quake. Now, Quake, if a minion schemes, and this is amazing. So if a minion schemes while you're going in an alter ego, you can just exhaust her to do two damage. And again, if you're playing a strategy where you're flipping down a lot, she can control most of the minions during the entire game. And just like, poof, okay, most minions will scheme for one, sometimes two, but that two damage, poof, it's done. It's negated as well by the the um, the beat cop so quake amazing for this type of strategy and the other one i really really like as my top cards is the interrogation room a lot of people forget about this card but this is you you fight off a minion bam okay you kill the minion and this is after you defeat a minion so you is extensions of your character so if i use quake to defeat the minion this won't trigger but if i have retaliate and the villain dies on my retaliate, then that works. If the villain, if you, you know, you do an attack event and it takes it out, then that works. So for me, interrogation room uh, is an auto include in, in this type of justice build because there are gonna be minions. You are gonna be taking some out and then why not remove some threat at the same time? And then finally, the next one is kind of not a, a permanent, which is kind of weird because the strategy is all about permanent justice. But uh, these two cards, so Sonic Rifle and Counterintelligence. So these two cards here, I was debating which one I, I like more in the top five. Uh, Sonic Rifle gives the, the villain a confuse. So it allows you to go down and not fearing the main scheme advancing, which is solid. Then if you, uh, if you add that to the beat cops, you remove three threat and the villain done nothing, then it's, you're just laughing. And then counterintelligence is basically kind of like the same thing. If the villain schemes for three, you just negate all of that three. And that's that's it. And it's a preparation, which is super solid. So it stays on the table until you need it, which is what I like about this. This strategy, you put stuff on the table until you need it. When you need it, you use it. So these are definitely my top, top choices uh, for this strategy. All right, now let's take a look at some of the other cards that I think fit really, really well into the strategy. Again, this is a strategy where you want to be putting stuff on the table that's going to stay uh, as long as possible. So it, there's no question that having some allies is the best. And Speed is one of the best allies for that because he technically bursts. He kind of gives you that kind of like burst effect by being able to remove four threat when he comes into the play and when he comes into play. So that's super, super solid, especially if you're playing in a two player game. Speed is one of the best allies that you can actually bring on board. Uh, also, I really, really enjoy all, basically all the two thwart allies. So Daredevil, because he removes threat and deals damage, which you can kind of complete with Quake, which is amazing. You can use Agent Coulson to go get a take a preparation like counterintelligence or spycraft that can just really help you out in what you want to do. Uh, and then you then you have your guardian characters that are super solid. You have Jack Flag, who again, kind of like Daredevil, removes threat, deals damage, removes threat, deals damage. This is super, super fun to have these types of characters. 
a Venom, who can remove 8 threat if you're always removing... And again, in this type of strategy, Venom should always be hitting for 3 or thwarting for 2 uh, every turn without when only taking 1 consequential damage. So for me, this is super, super solid. I like Eros because he can actually come in and if you play double mental, you can up, confuse up to 2 minions, which is very, very solid. Uh, those, like I said, these are my favorite... Again, if you're playing this type of strategy, you're going to be want to putting all these allies into play. They, they just make tons of sense. Uh, heroic Intuition, uh, again, you normally don't really want to use your character to remove some threat, but if you're playing Captain America, why not? If you're, having, if you're adding a character that can thwart for two minimum or even three, add the Heroic Intuition. It's just more threat removal, lets you take control of this situation. If ever you get a bad side scheme, it gets out of hand, and then you can just kind of already start up. Uh, if you want to play, if you're playing a character that you're like, oh, I want to reduce my cost, I want to play more cards, then instead of putting a beat cop, just put a surveillance team. I don't think, <coughs> I don't think it's as efficient because after three it goes away. But if you have board control, it can just be like put one in your deck, and then it's just like again deck thinning until you have all your cards that remove threat, and then you just hit with all your attacks. And then, obviously, cards like Skilled Investigator that actually benefit you from removing the last threat off a of side scheme. I think these are some of the top cards uh, that you can who, uh, you can go get. Uh, again, we, we're playing more permanent justice, so I, I don't really want to add a lot of events, but if there is one event I would add, is one way or another. I, that is probably one of the only events I would add in this type of build because one, it gets you to draw more cards uh, and then it gets you a side scheme that you can definitely clear out. And if you have the skilled investigator, if you have all these allies, if you have the beat cops, it allows you to just bring out some nasty side scheme and just be like, yep, we're good. We're good, no problemo. Now, obviously justice is expensive, so definitely recommend running at least two powers of justices in your deck. Uh, as you can see, when you're playing this type of build, uh, you want to make sure that you have all the double resources uh, possible in your deck. Now let's take a look at some of the basic cards that really help you uh, bring this strategy to life. All right, some of the top cards I like for this strategy. Uh, meditation. This is definitely a card you should definitely run two or three of. Uh, this card is just bonkers. Being able to just exhaust your, your hero to be able to play a card that's worth three is extremely valuable. Especially if you get these cards in the beginning of the game. This just, just breaks breaks them all. I, I think I've, I've said it in a couple of other games. I said it in my protection video. But Injustice Meditation is definitely a powerhouse card. It is a staple if you are going to be playing Justice. Even if it's in a solo or a multiplayer game. Meditation, uh, that first turn, being able to drop something for three. Imagine exhaust, put a beat cop off, turn one, put a second beat cop on. You already got turn one, two beat cops. You don't even need to flip to hero farm. You're just removing two threat already and just like, yep, I'll stay down my first turn. Get another powerful hand size. I think it's just too good. So meditation, uh, definitely one of those uh, basic cards that you definitely want to run. The other one I love in this type of strategy is cards like Assess the Situation. Running cards like Assess the Situation just makes your hand size bigger. Like sometimes you're going to have like these weird, oh, I only have one card. Well, if that one card is an Assess the Situation, instead of keeping it, transform that dead card into a plus one card for next turn. And then finally, because we're running a lot of allies and like high cost allies uh, that can thwart for two or do three damage or like do a lot of stuff, uh, running some first aids, uh, definitely you wanna, you wanna be running a few. So uh, if, you, if you intend on keep, if you're not running like eight allies, if you're running like three or four allies, definitely recommend the first aid. If you're gonna be uh, running a lot of those high cost cards, uh, that cost three or four, and if you have like eight, nine, 10, 12 cards that cost three or more, I would say for every four cards uh, that you have that cost three or more, add one of these, because uh, then you're, you're, you're gonna be most likely to get it. And then assess the situation, 
Well, again, that just depends on how much mental you want in your deck. So again, I think these are like the best cards that you can definitely add. Obviously, uh, you can also, you, I, I recommend adding Helicarrier, uh, Queen Carrier, Avengers Mansion, resources. And again, because you're playing Meditation, uh, this is just easy cards to add to your deck to complete the cycle. Again, putting those cards out fast is just gonna make your, your build so much more stronger. And yeah, if they're not they're not mandatory. You don't need them, but again, if you have a meditation and you're putting a you're exhausting and putting a mansion for one, you're just laughing. So that's it. That's it. That's the uh, that's the breakdown of this strategy, guys. Uh, nothing more to say than that. But again, it is a very fun strategy for solo. It is extremely powerful. Uh, you don't really necessarily need to stun or confuse the villain all the time uh, because you're just you're you just got so much control on threat that it just makes the it just makes that part of the game so much easier to deal with so you can focus on attacking the villain dealing damage to the villain and not worrying that oh man the threat's going to get out of hand too fast so that that permanent justice for solo multiplayer a solo or one or two player is amazing uh, and once you get to three, four players, it doesn't do it justice, a pun intended. All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comments what you like about the strategy. If you've tried this strategy, what worked for you, what didn't work for you, and all sorts of shenanigans like that. And yeah, let's open up the discussion on the permanent justice strategy, our first one uh, for this aspect. All right, guys, keep on playing Marvel Champions. And hope this video will help you beat the game. Ciao, ciao.